glow that full of ozone, because ozone will be in a gas that will percolate back through this nooks and crannies, and ozone will kill any bug. And then they draw some blood out of your arm and spin it in a centrifuge, and this that causes fibrin to heal, and this fibrin contains all the chemicals that tells bone to heal. So they cut off a little chunk of that, stuff it down in the hole, heals like magic. And they don't teach this in dental school, so you have to find a dentist that knows how to do this. Otherwise, if you just pull the tooth and use either just ozone or just platelet rich uh, fibrin, or basically either, even neither, uh, generally this whole area gets infected again in two or three years, and you're right back where you started it from as far as your uh, systemic health is concerned. So we're looking at the reasons that uh, we lose power in our battery system. We talked about not enough thyroid and hormone. We talked about scars. We talked about dental infections. And now we're going to talk about emotions. So our emotions and our memories are stored in the body's magnetic field. So it's very much like a DVD writer uses a magnetic needle and writes pictures on this platter. So how do we deal with emotions? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that all of the different circuits in our body run at a different frequency, very much like different radio stations, and every different emotion has a different frequency, so they resonate with each other. So anger gets stored in the liver gallbladder circuit, fear gets stored in the kidney bladder circuit, worry in the spleen stomach circuit, etc. So um, how do we do something about that? Well, it turns out that the um, that uh, um, to understand the difference between memories and emotions, you have to think about an orchestra. So, if an orchestra's instruments are all in tune, it's beautiful music. But if one of the violins is out of tune, you hear it screeching in front of all the other uh, instruments in the uh, orchestra. So. So our memories are stored in frequencies that are in tune with the body. Our uh, destructive uh, emotions are stored in frequencies that are out of tune with the body, like the out of tune violin. And the body doesn't want to listen to those, so it builds a wall around it so it doesn't have to hear them. And that blocks the circuit, drops the voltage, and that's the way emotions make us sick. Now, the human body is an electromagnet, and all electromagnets are surrounded by a magnetic field, and the human goes out about five feet or so, as you can see in this you know, illustration. And one of the interesting things is that as things happen to us, it, the information gets pushed out into the field. So out at the edge of our field is what happened to us at birth, and what's happening to us today is right up against us. Now, again, you can see in this graphic that um, our memories are with frequencies that are in tune with the body. Our emotions are in frequencies that are out of tune. Because these are frequencies, they can be tuned with scalar energy, like from the, the, the biotransducer. So when we apply the energy from the biotransducer to this out of tune frequency, it will tune it into a frequency that is compatible with the body. So what you've done is you've tuned an emotion into being just a memory. So let's say, for example, you're, have, you're driving around a curve and you have a car wreck. Next time you drive around the curve, because of the emotion of the wreck, your pupils dilate, your pulse speeds up, you get you perspire, you get jittery, and so forth. Now, if you treat the emotion of the wreck the, the way I've discussed, it will turn the emotion of the wreck to being a memory of the wreck. So now when you drive around the curve, you're saying, huh, I swear I had my wreck, but nothing happens because now it's just a memory. So this is an amazingly powerful uh, tool uh, because the majority of people who have chronic illnesses have um, a lot of emotional baggage. Next, we look at toxins. All toxins are uh, elect uh, electron stealers. And so the expert in that in our clinic is Dr. Uh, Falmo, Dr. Chase Falmo. And so here's how he does it. So every atom has its own frequency, and so you measure that with a spectrophotometer. So that's the way, for example, if you use a spectrophotometer and look at the light coming from the moon, you can say, oh, there's magnesium on the moon, I see its frequency. Put a bunch of frequencies together, you have a molecule, and every molecule has its own pattern of frequencies, which you can identify with this gadget called a mass spectrometer. And that's how CSI can say, oh, this person was 
a poison with fill in the blank, they can see the pattern of that in their mass spectrometer. So if you take a frequency and you put the same one in again, it increases its power. But if you put a frequency in and put the same one in out of phase, these two collapse each other and poof, it's gone. And in physics, that's called destructive interference. So if you go out to Las Vegas or Reno and go in where the slots are, they don't want you to use your cell phone. So the hotels know the frequencies that all the phone companies use. And so they uh, can put out those frequencies out of phase. So if you try to use your phone, it just cancels your signal. So we use that same basic technology based on the work of Dr. Lee Calvin, which we've modified a little bit. And we can digitize the frequency of the toxins in your system. And then we can reverse the polarity, put those reverse frequencies in a little bottle, uh, which creates the antidote, shines scalar energy through that into you, and whatever toxins are in there get poofed. And so this is an amazingly powerful way to get rid of, of the toxins that uh, you accumulated over time. You should remember that when voltage drops, oxygen drops, and when oxygen drops, infections show up. And so anybody who has is sick, has low voltage and low oxygen, at least one on the circuit. And in that circuit, they're going to have infections. And this is a very easy way and an effective way to start dealing with those infections. So in summary, we start off with a battery that's charged up and all these various things begin to discharge it. And soon the battery is totally discharged, which causes it to flip upside down. Once it's flipped upside down, it won't take a charge. And so nothing you do really works. Now with the scalar energy, it will flip its polarity back up, but it's still discharged. So then you have to use electromagnetic energy like you have in the biomodulator, and that will recharge the battery back up. Once you have power in that system, again, the body will start making new cells and healing. Remember that the body never forgets how to heal itself, but it has to have the voltage to do it. It has to have all the materials it takes to make new cells, and you have to get rid of all the toxins that damage cells as fast as you make them. And so you have to address all these different things. So most people are not able to do all of these things for themselves at home. You have to get a blood test to do this. You have to know how to fix the scars, dental infections. You need the assistance of uh, a dentist that can read a cone beam scan. Emotions are very difficult to treat for yourself. You have to learn how to do that uh, if you're going to do it for other people. But if you're doing it for yourself, you need someone of us who's trained out to do it to help you with that. And the same with toxins. These are skills that can be learned and we teach as many people as want to learn it. Uh, but again, you need to do all of these things, but then you continue to use your biotransducer and your biomodulator at home to continue to keep your batteries charged up so that uh, you can continue to have normal voltage. And one of the things people tend to ignore uh, has to do with oxygen. Uh, and the, the understanding of that is called the Bohr effect or the Bohr's law. So basically, if you put a gadget on your finger and it measures how much oxygen is attached to your hemoglobin, um, that is a measurement again of how much oxygen is in the hemoglobin, is attached to your hemoglobin in your lungs. It tells you essentially nothing about how much oxygen is available out in your tissue where it really matters. So what you have to have is you have to have 34 millivolts of voltage in the heart circuit because the heart circuit is the power supply to the business part of your lungs where the oxygen attaches. If you have 30 more millivolts, that oxygen attaches to the hemoglobin and then it goes out into your tissue, but it won't come loose from your hemoglobin unless you drop the voltage to 11 millivolts. And so this is the part that work that us physicians are taught in that freshman medical school and then basically forgotten all the rest of our careers. Uh, but how amazingly important it is because again, you stick that thing on your finger and the doc says, oh, your, your oxygen is great. It's 99%, but you could be 80% deficient down in your cells because the oxygen won't come loose from the hemoglobin. So how does it come loose? Well, inside of our red cells, we have bicarbonate uh, which is basically uh, a form of baking soda. And so our cells make carbon dioxide 
And when you mix that with water, it forms bicarbonate, which uh, or carbonic acid, which then splits into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen. And so hydrogen is capable of being an electron stealer and lowering the voltage from 34 millivolts down to 11, and thus the oxygen comes loose and is now available for your cells. But the problem is that the majority of people past the age of 40, their kidneys get away, can't make bicarbonate anymore. And so this system doesn't work. And so you become progressively uh, more deficient in oxygen in your tissue, uh, no matter what your voltages are, because you've run out of bicarbonate. So one of the amazingly powerful tools that people can use is to simply take a half a teaspoon of baking soda and, and glass of water every morning, uh, if you're past 40, to be sure you have enough bicarbonate in your red blood cells to make this system work. Otherwise, you think you're doing well and have enough oxygen, but progressively day after day, year after year, you don't. And so again, as you begin to see voltage and how it's controlled, controls the level of oxygen that is available for your tissue. And it, of course, if anybody thinks that oxygen is not important, just hold your breath for a while. Now, in our clinic, we do some other things uh, that you're probably not aware of. For example, if this is a device, uh, it's the external counterpressure therapy device, or we just call it the oxygen bed. But this device was FDA approved in uh, the 1960s for treating angina, uh, but it's actually capable of, of causing the body to uh, make new blood vessels throughout your system. So you lay on this bed and you have uh, uh, these uh, uh, balloons around your legs and, and pelvis and your electrocardiogram. So when your heart's at rest, as proven by the electrocardiogram, these balloons blow up and push pressure up through your entire vascular system. So think about a garden hose. You buy a new garden hose and put it out in your yard in March, but by the end of August, that garden hose has gotten smaller in size and it's gotten very brittle. And that's actually what happens to our blood vessels as we age. But if we take in and pulse inside of that, it wakes it up and causes the blood vessels to make new ones. And so one can restore people's poor circulation over a period of time. And this is one of the things that we find very helpful in our clinic. Another device we have that's very helpful in the clinic is called the VASPR. When the VASPR is, has cooling pads around the arms and legs and against your back, it does some interesting things. And that is when you exercise, but have cooling around the muscles, it causes the lactic acid to stay in the muscles. And it, when the lactic acid in the muscles reaches a certain threshold, it sends a signal to the pituitary or brain that you've had muscle damage and causes the pituitary to put out growth hormone which goes out and starts healing things. So this is a mechanism to turn on your healing mechanisms by simply riding this bike. And of course, riding the bike also, as I've mentioned, helps to recharge your batteries. In addition, if you were to stick a needle into your belly and pull out some fat, you'll see that there are a few stem cells in there with the fat. If you now put a cooling pad on your belly for a while, now stick the needle in and draw out some more fat, you'll see there are lots of stem cells in there. So actually cooling the fatty tissue in your body causes your body to make stem cells. So it's a neat way to get your own stem cells so you don't have to worry about getting somebody else's. And then those stem cells, of course, do out, go out and do their job for you. So this is just another one of the tools we have in the clinic. Another interesting tool that we use uh, in the clinic is uh, to uh, provide you with uh, hydrogen. So there have been over 2,000 medical articles published in medical journals in the last couple of years about hydrogen and its effectiveness in, in helping all sorts of chronic illnesses. Uh, there are a variety of people who have, have postulated about how this really works, but nevertheless, uh, one of the suggestions is that because hydrogen is such a small atom, it easily goes inside of the cells. Hydrogen has the ability to be an electron donor and that can thus inside the cells and neutralize any electron stealers that are in there and thus it is a, a, a way of cleaning up the toxins that are inside your cells. I think there are probably additional mechanisms 
But nevertheless, what we find is that this is a very powerful tool to use in addition uh, for getting people's uh, detox and uh, getting their uh, systems back to normal.